Hello, there we are. This is episode number four um, of the toolbox construction. Uh, last time was the hardware show. You remember we had hinges and handles and a chain stay and a mortise lock. And uh, what I've done is I've done a lot of the work here, but most of what we're going to be doing is going to happen today, and that's the attaching of the hardware. So I've done a fair amount of mortising, as you can see here. This is the mortise for the front lock. A lot of wood sculpting going on there. And that fits in like that. And I've also done mortises for the hinges, both down here and also up in the lid. I left one mortise undone, and that's this one here. I'm going to do that on camera. So that should be good and stressful for me. And I'll show you some tools and stuff that I use to make this a little bit easier and a little bit better. So, um, I guess we can start pretty much getting right into it. I'm going to swing this around a little bit here because I need to work on this side. Uh, first thing I did was I had to mark where my hinges go. So what I did was you take the lid, you put it exactly where you want it to be, you measure it carefully, and then I take a sharp marking knife and I measure in where I want the hinge to start and I just poke that knife in there and put a little knife edge on both sides, the lid and the carcass, uh, to show where I want my hinge to start. I do the same thing over here and those two marks control everything. I reference from those marks only when I'm making the mortises. So that's what I've done. So now what I need to do is lay this out, scribe it, and then chisel out the space for it. So to do that, I use a very cool measuring device called a marking gauge. And what it does, it's a, it's a post here with this brass part which slides up and down the post and a razor sharp wheel on the end. Uh, and that allows me to make consistent marks. This is right now set for the width of the hinge leaf. And I can transfer that exact same measurement with great accuracy everywhere else on here. So I'm going to do that right now. I can see what I'm doing. You can't see my marks, but they're there, trust me. So here we go. Okay, then I leave this set for everything else that I do involving the hinges. I don't change that. I also want to set a line for the thickness of the hinge leaf to show how deep I have to come down when I remove material. So I have another marking gauge. This is a little one. About 12 inches. That's good. And this one I can move because I'm not using it right now. This one is set for the thickness of the hinge leaf. So now I'll move it along the side of the case here. I may have to move, turn this away from you a little bit, but um, I need to make that mark. So let me do that. And there we go. Now I've got two marks to reference off of. These are neat little devices, aren't they? Brass, stainless steel, precision, all that stuff. Don't tell Jonine I just ordered another one of these because you need more than one, as you can see. And my theory is, my plan is, that so long as she never sees two of these in the same place at the same time, she'll never know that I own two of them. Wednesday it comes, UPS. Okay. Who's the lucky boy? <laughs> okay. Alright, now I'm going to mark my other marks here using, uh, using my marking knife here. This isn't easy doing it on camera. Now I'm putting this right in my little knife mark. Again, you can't see it, but I can see it. And now my square is right where it needs to be. And then I very carefully I'm 
make my marks. Now what I do is take my hinge and I, I reference that, use the hinge itself to help me make my marks. I put my marking gauge right in there like that and then I transfer just a little mark there until I get my square Alright, so now I've got my marks for chiseling here and my depth gauge set. Okay, what I've done here, in the interest of time, is while we were away, I, I deepened those lines, my scribe marks, and I've used a chisel to just define that border better, just by notching it out a little bit. And now I'm going to go through with a hammer, a mallet, and a chisel, and I'm going to knock the rest of that out. Making sure I don't go too deep. Okay, now I've got them all cut off there. Before I go any further, I want to, I should have done this before. It's going to keep that from going anywhere. Okay. Now, I'm going to try to cut these out. To get the rest out, I'm going to use something that works a whole lot more accurately than a chisel. And that's called a router plane. Here we are. Looks like this. And it has a blade here on the bottom. It's a narrow chisel shaped blade on a post. Here's another one. They come in different sizes. Here's another one. And it moves along like this. So it acts like a chisel, but it has a fence, also a neat knob to raise and lower this to where it needs to be. I can come incrementally down to make my depth perfect. So let's see how this works. Let's start there. All right, that's pretty much got it. It's cleaned up. Look how nice that is. Nice and flat. 
And now I try my hinge on for size and it fits in there perfectly. Now all I got to do is screw these down. The other screws are in so we're going to put the harbor together and we're going to see how well we did. Be back in a bit. Okay, finishing up here. We have the hinges attached, the mortise lock in, the chain stay on, and I'm finishing up here with these handles. Now if you're wondering what formula I might have used for determining the height of this handle, um, I just eyeballed it. I just plain and simply eyeballed it. I trusted my eyes. And as it turns out, after I eyeballed it a few times and decided on what height I wanted it to be, I measured it and this handle is two-thirds up from the, the bottom and it's one-third from the top. So it's, I guess, the rule of thirds you would call it. But there it is. The other handle is on. Very nice. And now for the great reveal. Voila! I still have to put some some screws in here. There's our chain stay. This will be darkened. Uh, we'll do that last. And also our mortise lock is here. And I don't remember if I showed you, but there's a little keyhole here too, up front. And we'll put the key in it for you, just to make the whole thing complete. Where's my key? Here. Okay. Hang on. Here we go. Voila, isn't that neat? <laughs> okay, so it's coming along. We're getting there. We've got a ways to go. We have to make tra trays for the inside yet. And we, of course, have to finish this. But we're getting there. Um, also, uh, I'm working on another project that is a workbench exactly like this one, or almost exactly like this one, for Jonine, since she wants a workbench like this. So that involves a lot of work. As you know, this is a laminated top. It's two by fours. The legs are mortise and tenon. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to show you the parts of that as they are right now. And we're back. Here's the top. It's laminated. It's glued up. It's a monster. It's, uh, of course, needs to be flattened and the ends need to be squared. It's a monster. This thing weighs 130 pounds. It's all we can do to maneuver this thing around the room. Uh, it has about two quarts of glue that went into gluing this up. It's quite a project, but it's going to turn out to be a great tabletop. It's beautiful wood, and once it's planed down, it's going to look really nice. Now, the, the 2x4s were 8 feet long. This is a 5-foot section here. So I used the cutoffs to make the legs by gluing them up. So I got four legs here. There they are. And then there's also four joiners that join the legs into pairs. So the legs will go like this, and then this will go between them along the bottoms, like this. So we'll have leg, leg units, pairs of legs that then will be joined by long stretchers that are laminated two by eights. So these will have big tenons cut in the ends of them. And I sure wish I had a second marking gauge because if I did, I would be able to mark the tenon width and the tenon length with its own measuring gauge. But uh, I guess I'll have to do the best I can. Anyway. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, I think that's our show this time. We'll come back and, and show you where we're going on with this. I don't know where the stupid music got to. Maybe it's in here. Absolutely, here it is. Is that better? Okay. See you next time. This is Julia Child. Bon appetit.